Hi, and welcome back to Central Valley Music History. And for this segment, I have with me Lydia Fortner Walker from the Shroud, from the Shroudettes, and we're going to see a little clip of Lydia and what she does in her very cool goth band. say old friend of mine because uh, she isn't but she's been a, a long time friend of mine and um, actually probably the inspiration for me playing music really oh yeah because uh, before I started my band I was your manager that's true <laughs> that's true that's true and uh, I wasn't very goth and uh, I just remember it was very, very fascinating. We made some of the videos and different yeah. things like that at the Wilson. I you photographed you. Yeah. This is, uh, I believe, one of my photographs behind us. I think so, yeah. yeah. Is that from the Wilson? Or is it's from the Wilson okay. Theater. And uh, I want to say, Ian back there has very, very, very long hair. You yeah. see that? He doesn't have that. Just recently he cut off his hair. And yeah, he doesn't have the cousin it thing going on. The cousin it thing, and Rod has cut his hair, and yeah. you still have all the same members, don't you? Um, well, the most recent lineup, yes, we still have all of them. We actually technically had 13 lineup changes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, some Through people played one show right. and it wouldn't work out. And, <laughs> you know, and cha things change, sure. Mm -hmm. How far back does the Shroud go as opposed to the Shroudettes? Uh, Shroudettes were from 1989 to 1991, and then 1991 became the Shroud and onwards. So. In the Shroudettes, there were other girls as well, weren't there? Yeah, it was all girls up front and then a um, guy playing drums. So. Oh, yeah. how exciting. Yeah. So you two were one of the first uh, girl bands. Who yeah. was in that band? Um, Debbie Rankin and then Christine, whose last name I can't remember. Okay. And, <laughs> and the guy on the drums? Yeah, Brian Dvorak. Okay. Yeah. But you know, we all had stage names. You know, right. So. Of course you did. You were, were you Eva Von Helsing? I was Eva Von Helsing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and cool. Everybody had all these different names. But, you know, Brian had to be different kind of, you know, odd. So he was Mailbox. That was his stage Mailbox. Name. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Now, when you were the Shroudettes, were you more punk rock than? More death rock. More yeah. death rock. Yeah. Which was new for 1989. Yeah, and for sure in Fresno. Yeah. So did you get to play in Fresno at all? Yes. Lots right of shows. Did you play some of the punk rock shows? or? Um, we may have. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we played at the Olympic Tavern a lot. That was our main place. That we oh, played. okay. So, Who yeah. did you play with? Um, we played with Fiber Nudes, and I think we may have played with Electric Sex Hands. I can't Okay. So, I don't know, I those are really going <laughs> back with the names yeah. there. I vaguely, yeah. vaguely, vaguely remember mm -hmm. those. Oh, Tombstones, too. We played with. The Tombstones. Oh, my goodness. Them. Yeah, we remember the Tombstones. Yeah. So, ex exactly, when you started becoming the Shroud, you just changed to becoming a goth band? Yeah, I wanted to do something, you know, a little bit more serious, a little bit more melodic, perhaps. Um, you know, not so death rock. I wanted, there was certain imagery I wanted to deal with. You want it to be more theatrical, mm -hmm. which the uh, whole yeah. uh, goth scene is. Mm -hmm. um, vibrant makeup and the yeah. whole white face and black. Yeah. And I mean, well, you know, there was whole subdivisions like any genre, you know. You exactly. Know, the, the beautiful goths and then you had the industrial goths and, you know, whatever. And the scary ones. Yeah, the vampire people <laughs> and all that. So, yeah. yeah. 
So that was way at the beginning of that scene as well, too. Mm -hmm. Who was the first goth band? Oh, well, the first time the term got applied, I think, was like, you know, Bauhaus, Susan the Banshees, okay. people like that, that whole, you know, British post-punk, but moving out of death rock stuff. And I know when I was doing a little research, I noticed that Sparks had a, actually had a song called Faith in the Muse. Really? Yes. And I oh, thought, interesting. oh, because I remember Sparks from when I was a kid. Yeah. They were very avant-garde mm -hmm. as well. I. I, I don't know what you would call them, punk rock or you know, avant-garde. The you know, they were that's just, the problem with labels, you know. Right, exactly. Kind of go, right. Trying to fit things in, so. Exactly, yeah, they and, sparks, yeah. and they were sparks. Yeah. They were very, very incredible. But and I thought that was interesting. So, and Bauhaus, exactly, is is a whole movement in itself. Um, what would you say, architecturally and right, that whole minimalist thing. Exactly. So they were very, you know, black and white makeup and really austere clothing styles. It was very uh, film noir looking kind of stuff. Who was your inspiration? Oh, well, I mean, obviously Susan the Banshees was, I mean, every girl <laughs> coming up through punk rock and goth and all that sort of thing. Um, but really, though, when I first started wanting to be in a band, actually it was um, when I first heard Fleetwood Mac on the radio, Stevie Nicks doing, you know, the song Dreams. I went, oh, you can do that with a rock band. Okay. Then I was interested, you know. So oh my goodness. The whole imagery and... Right, and it was very uh, dreamy. Yeah. Like video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you actually were a young gal during um, the MTV days. Yeah. Which yeah. was very... It was a new thing and most people didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> they loved MTV the buttons. Old days. MTV buttons. Yeah. So, I want yeah. my MTV. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, I did and a lot of research on that. <laughs> <laughs> Watching it all day. <laughs> Yeah. And so, as you got older, and you um, with Rod, you've been Rod's been in the band since the Shroudettes, and yeah, he was in the Shroudettes for a little bit at the tail end, I think. Yeah. yeah. And he's your bass player still? No, he's our guitarist. Oh, he's your yeah, guitarist. Yeah, Ian's our bass player. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because we kept going through all these guitarists all the time, that's why we had so many lineup changes, and we were recording and. Um, Actually, Rob is teaching Manny Diaz some of the guitar parts to play in the recording, and Manny's like, why don't you just play? You know how to play it. And Rob kind of, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it didn't occur to him to be the guitarist until then. So. He, so had been the, he had been a bass player, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Since right. he was okay. like 14. Right, that's yeah. what I remember, Western Chapter or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those uh, other bands that he was in as well. Yeah. Which was always one of my favorite bands. They had some really yeah. good songs. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little break here.